Diversity hire teachers lose their jobs as the money runs out. Have you noticed we have about 30 to 50% food price inflation and it's almost impossible to afford to pay bills or to even consider buying a house? Yes, that inflation is a direct result from overspending. What'd they spend the money on? Well, about $200 billion of COVID-19 relief funds went to school districts. Were they upgrading their ventilation system so that they had good ventilation for the students in case there was another issue with the pandemic? No, they spent the money on hiring a lot of staff and the staff there was no permanent funding for. And of course, they didn't realize eventually the money would run out. So what they did was they just spent the money on a lot of diversity hires. And that's not meant in a disparaging way. That's just actually what they did. Almost $200 billion of COVID-19 relief funds have been spent by school districts. Now they're forced to cut their staff, including recently hired teachers, leading to widespread layoffs across the United States. The layoffs disproportionately affect newer diverse hires, reversing progress made in diversifying the education workforce, especially in schools serving low-income students. And why would this disproportionately affect diverse hires? Because all of the money went towards hiring diverse people. All of it? Yeah, almost. Probably not all of it, but a huge disproportionate amount. So then they're the ones affected when the money runs out. Schools that receive significant relief funding, primarily those serving low-income students, will be the most affected by staff reductions, compounding challenges in providing quality education. Positions like counselors, restorative justice coordinators. Yeah, we're gonna talk about what are you talking about, restorative justice coordinators. They have those now. Consider that like a woke guidance counselor, a guidance counselor that thinks you're racist but also teaching assistants that were added during the pandemic to support student recovery are among the roles being cut, raising concerns about the well-being and academic success of students. In states with last-in, first-out policies, which ought to be all states, meaning that if we just hired you two months ago or six months ago, we're not going to fire someone that looks different from you who's been with the school for five years or ten years because people have been working towards a career. There are a lot of problems with teachers now. The teachers unions are completely destroying the country. But if you've spent two years, five years, 10 years working somewhere, you should not be kicked out and replaced because they don't like your skin color, your gender, or your sexual preferences. From USA Today, with COVID-19 relief gone, teachers are losing their jobs. It's a blow to diversity. They really took $189.5 billion and used almost all of it to hire teachers that they like their skin color, their sexual preference, their gender. They just, they really went and did that. Yeah, they did. And they didn't even realize eventually they would run out of this money. Erica Popka's ninth grade English students were livid in the spring when she told them she wouldn't be back to teach this fall. The district where she works in Hartford, Connecticut, terminated her contract because the COVID-19 relief money that covered her salary was about to dry up. Newer teachers, such as Popka, were the first to be cut. Her students wrote letters urging school board members to change their minds. Popka, the founding advisor of the Multilingual Student Club, worried she would lose bonds with Latino students she had taught for two years who identify with her culturally as a Latina and as one of the few teachers who speak Spanish at the school. So she wasn't the only teacher who spoke Spanish, of course, because all of us going through high school, almost all of us were presented with, you need to learn a second language. And we learned Spanish, most of us. The district ultimately came up with other funding to pay her. And in a win for her and her students, officials reversed the layoff. Popka is among the thousands of teachers and school staffers across the United States at risk of losing their jobs as districts balance their budget and prepare for the shortfall after COVID-19 relief money expires. School districts have been scrambling to put unfunded staffers into different roles. The reality is that many students will lose contact with adults with whom they've built relationships in recent years. 
This is pretty normal when you go to school and you have a teacher you like, and then a couple of years later, of course, you're not going to stay in touch with that teacher. You move on and the teacher moves on and deals with other students. The Biden administration granted schools $189.5 billion over the past few years through elementary and secondary school emergency relief funds under the American Rescue Plan Act. School officials have until the end of September to commit the remainder of their money and districts will no longer be able to pay for non-teaching staff roles with that money after September 30th. Schools nationwide use most of their relief fund money to pay for classroom teachers and support staff. Districts across the country are now laying off recently hired educators, teaching assistants, counselors, restorative justice coordinators, and other key staff at schools, or they're scrambling to find ways to retain them. Now, of course, they shouldn't be scrambling to find ways to retain them because they knew this was happening. The money was set aside for them, given to them. They decided to spend it on hiring diverse staff. Whether or not that was appropriate, of course, the money was going to run out. And they absolutely knew that in advance. Now, what's a restorative justice coordinator? Well, it's like a guidance counselor that thinks you're racist. Here's an example. From Chalkbeat, New York, New York City students and advocates call for school-based restorative justice and mental health funding. During a lesson on the Black Lives Matter movement in her first year of high school, Lexi Greenberg was shocked to hear two students in her class making insensitive and offensive remarks. We don't know what those remarks were. They're not covered in the article because they don't support whatever the argument is they're trying to make in this article. Perhaps they said all lives matter. Perhaps they asked questions like, well, why are we starting to focus on one race when all people are important, when all people have value? Who knows what they said? We don't know. But those kind of remarks at the time were considered hate speech. Quote, I left the lesson feeling angry and alone, she said noting she was the only black student in the class. Lexi approached staff at Mulaney and Brooklyn High School, where just 14% of the students are black, and asked for the students to be suspended. So this student decided she was offended by something that other students said, and then just asked that students be suspended, because why not? If you don't like something that another student says, everyone should just suspend you. And hey, that's what restorative justice is really all about. Instead, the school counselor and principal urged her to meet with the students before the school pursued any potential disciplinary action. She was reluctant at first, but Lexi said meeting with her classmates helped her quickly realize they'd spoken from a place of ignorance rather than harm. They just didn't have Lexi's vast wisdom. And after the meeting, they became her first friends in high school. Lexi, now a senior, remains close with those students today and is a founding member of her school's Restorative Justice Action Team. The Restorative Justice Action Team. That gives you a sense of what a restorative justice coordinator does at a high school. A recent survey of 190 school district leaders found that teacher reductions were, quote, the most common budget cut officials anticipated. Conversations about staff layoffs cropped up in at least 28 districts ahead of the upcoming fiscal cliff according to a tracker of media reports from the Georgetown University-based research center, Edronomics Lab. The post-pandemic layoffs have been widespread. Montana's Helena Public Schools cut 36 positions, including 21 teachers. The Arlington Independent School District in Texas cut 275 positions, including counselors, tutors, and teaching support staff. Newer teachers are the first to be let go in states that allow or require districts to use last-in, first-out policies which protect tenured teachers, or protect teachers that were there before the other teachers who just came in on the COVID money. Many people terminated will be staffers of color, said Aaron Paulus, a professor of sociology and education at Columbia University. States that diversified their educated workforce in the past several years will see a backslide in that progress since, quote, recently hired staff who are often more diverse will be laid off more than experienced staff who often are more traditionally white, he said, because they just didn't hire white teachers and white staff. They use this as a diversity hire slush fund. I mean, what else would you say? And that is what they apparently did. Is that appropriate? No, it's not appropriate. Schools serving low-income students will be hit hardest by the shift in funding because those campuses receive more federal relief money, he said. 
schools were required to comply with some equity provisions when obligating the relief money. Oh, were they now? Required to comply with some equity provisions. Really, not equality, but equity. The end of the funding will disparately affect students of color and kids in high poverty neighborhoods. Popka, who comes from the Bronx in New York City, is concerned about what the law says will mean for her school. It means you're going to have merit-based teaching. You're going to have actually qualified teachers, not teachers that look like this or speak that language or have this gender or that sexual preference. It means what you should be doing is focusing on teaching kids. This is affecting the kids' whole life. It's not important that they spend time hanging out with adults that look like them or may even have the same sexual preference as them. That might even be inappropriate. What's important is that the teachers are qualified. They have experience. They know what they're doing. And that's all anyone who's a professional should be concerned about. She continued, quote, I am relieved but wary because quite a few positions are still vacant, she said. We don't have the amount of staff we're supposed to have. And I'm concerned about how the lack of staff is going to impact the students and the school. Now, actually, you do have the funding you're supposed to have. You just don't have additional funding paid for by the federal government with equity set-asides in what was probably an illegal maneuver. Which states are most likely to lose new teachers? At least 11 states. Alaska, California, Hawaii, Kentucky, Massachusetts, Missouri, Nebraska, New Jersey, New York, Ohio, and Rhode Island. Last year had policies explicitly requiring districts to consider seniority in layoff decisions, according to a 2023 analysis from Educators for Excellence, a New York-based nonprofit organization that supports state laws that get rid of seniority-based considerations from layoff decisions. These people are subversive. They are enemies. They are telling you, look, we have this agenda. We don't care if you're qualified. We don't care if you've invested five years or 10 years or 20 years of your life in this career. We don't care if you're 10 times better than anyone else we would bring in. We're here to push an agenda, an agenda that says merit doesn't matter. Skin color matters. Gender matters. Sexual preference matters. Literally, that's all that matters. So we'll just bring in people that look like that and we'll pull people out of careers and we don't care what happens. Also, give us federal money, and also, you're a racist. And these are people we're supposed to take seriously. We should not take them seriously. They're dangerous, they're destructive, they're even self-destructive, and they don't realize it. Some other states, including Connecticut, where Popka lives, allow districts to consider seniority and layoff decisions, among other factors, but it's not required. Some states ban districts from considering seniority as a factor at all. And for anyone who would pursue a career in those states, it's a big mistake. Get out of that state. Because junior teachers tend to begin their careers in higher poverty schools, there could be cases in which schools lose high percentages of their staff, said Marguerite Rosa, director of Georgetown University's Edgenomics Lab. Quote, it's really disruptive for students, Rosa said, and it's not great for teachers. When Popka told her class of mostly Black and Latino eighth graders last spring that she would be laid off, they were heartbroken. Now, the reason why you would wind up going to a, quote, bad neighborhood or low-income neighborhood when you're starting a teaching career is they're hiring. And when you have a suburban school district, they don't tend to hire as aggressively. Those teachers tend to keep their positions. It's usually a pretty good job. There's also a high population concentration in cities and low-income neighborhoods, so they have even more students to serve. Popka is one of a few new staffers of color returning to the district this year. A few of her colleagues lost their jobs in the spring and won't be back when school starts. What should families expect to see at schools? In addition to the emergency funding layoffs, Rosa said, many teachers may leave of their own accord. Some districts may also try to shrink their staffing pools with attrition rather than layoffs. Quote, they're going to hope and pray teachers just leave, Rosa said. And they can hope and pray that teachers leave, but they're handling multi-million dollar budgets. You would think they could coordinate these things a little bit better. Most of the cuts will likely hit the pool of support staff districts beefed up during the pandemic to help kids recover, Columbia's Palace said. The counselors, nurses, restorative justice coordinators, and teaching assistants added to campus staff in recent years will be gone. And students in their school communities will start to feel that loss by the start of the school year. 
Francis Pina is one of several staffers and one of the few black men hired by Boston Public Schools to train teachers how to infuse social emotional learning, which is social justice nonsense, into classroom teaching. At the end of last year, he learned his role in the jobs of most new staffers on his team would be dissolved because it was considered a short-term position. And of course, he was told that clearly when he was hired. He was also told, 99% chance, the funding for his position was this short-term, absurd, multi-billion dollar giveaway from the federal government with equity tie-ups so that he could be hired to do his agenda. Boston Public Schools pay Pina with COVID-19 emergency money through the end of the past academic year. Pina will return as a high school math teacher this year, great, so he can put racism lessons inside of math. But he worries about what will happen to the district's social-emotional learning program. When he heard his role was coming to an end, Pina said he was nervous because he felt it was really important to support students still facing pandemic-related academic, social, and emotional setbacks. He said students in the district haven't worked through all of those losses, even if the district has gone back to the status quo. As a black man who attended Boston Public Schools, he believes he offers a unique perspective to kids, including black students, and helps them thrive academically and emotionally at school. But prioritizing this is important, Pina said. Kids need to know we care about them. Kids should have a sense that you care about them. And if you care about them, it does come across to the kids. You simply have to take an interest in them. You don't need to look like them. Teacher diversification will face a setback. Diversity among the teaching staff has improved in recent years in Massachusetts where Pina teaches. Are they qualified? No, it's not important. We just want to make sure they look a certain way or have a certain sexual preference. That's all we're concerned about in this article. But the state's last in first out policy means schools will lose diversification in the workforce. That's a problem considering students of color are the majority of public schools in the U.S. Nearly one-fourth of public schools did not have an educator of color on staff, according to a May analysis of state-by-state -state data from TNTP, a nonprofit organization focused on the needs of students of color and those in poverty. So they're a race-based organization focusing on race-based things for certain races. Well, only one race. Academic studies show students of color perform better academically when they have teachers from diverse backgrounds. Actually, I can tell you that academic studies show that when you have a competent teacher who actually does take an interest in their students and isn't trying to leverage what they look like as part of their lessons, they do a lot better. The students do better. The teachers do better. And you create a community of teaching and learning that continues from year to year and spreads out among the classrooms. One excellent teacher can help make an excellent school. And skin color doesn't provide for that. To stave off losses and rescind seniority-based layoffs, some lawmakers tried to change how layoffs work. But they ran into pushback from the state teachers union, which said the policies harm protections for senior educators. Well, clearly, yes, it does harm senior educators. Educators who've been in the system and put their time in, and they're part of the teachers union, so at least now the teachers union is getting pressured and saying, look, you've got to get rid of your teachers. You, you can't just have teachers who've been there for years and know what they're doing. We need to bring in new teachers that look a certain way or have a certain sexual preference. So you just go ahead and tell your union members that. And even the teachers union has to say, look, we are pushing a lot of nonsensical agendas right now, but this is one that affects teachers financially, personally, and affects their retirement. They're not going to go for that. We can't force that on them yet. In March, the Massachusetts legislature rejected sections of education bills that would have removed seniority considerations as the sole factor for layoffs. Well, while we are happy to see the legislature taking strides to improve teacher diversity in Massachusetts, it is disheartening to see that the Education Committee chose not to prioritize protecting these very educators in the event of district layoffs. According to Lisa Lazar, Executive Director of Educators for Excellence, Massachusetts chapter, saying this in a news release. More new staffers of color are expected to face layoffs this year, Rosa said. For now, Popka in Connecticut is looking forward to returning to the classroom and seeing her students, many of whom come from Latin American countries and with whom she feels a special bond. She's worried about the cuts, she says, because the school needs more teachers and support staff, not less. 
She's already heard from people she knows who had considered entering the teaching profession in Hartford or elsewhere who have pulled back because of the district's lack of money. Quote, it's really concerning, she said. What's really concerning is there's almost no consideration of merit and a good teacher can really have a tremendously positive effect on a student's life, even one good teacher in that one student's life. But raising the standards in a school can make many teachers do better, work harder, take additional continuing education classes, improve their skills. That's what teachers should be focused on, not skin color, not gender, not trying to serve kids from multiple different countries, not this country, but of all countries, the teachers should be focused on this country. That's what citizens are paying taxes for. And that's the minimum that we expect. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.